Now, w w why would a group of, of liberal intellectuals or politicians or media stars or whatever, why would they sit around and decide to uh, uh, dismember or dilute the criminal justice system if they thought in advance that it would raise the amount of criminality. Oh, they, 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 didn't, they didn't think that, but the point is... They just thought wrongly that it would, be, that it would help. Yes, but, but it would also give them an enormously larger role than they had before. I mean, a judge who just sits there and applies the laws that have been passed by the legislature has a very minor role. But if he takes the expansive uh, judicial activist role, then of course he's on the leading edge and he can look for the hosannas and all the rest of it from the side. How, how does this play out in the realm of something else you have written about, which is uh, affirmative action. Uh, what, exactly what, the same How does way. that process, what's the one, two, three, four on that? I, 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 haven't, I haven't worked it out uh, uh, like that, but uh, certainly there is no interest whatever in finding out empirically whether things have been made better or worse for minorities as a result of, of this program. Uh, and in fact, if you bring them up evidence, they'll say, ah, oh, but things would have been even worse had we not done this. Similarly with the war on poverty, you, you can show how dependency on government was going down, poverty was going down before this program was ever put in. And within a few years, dependence on government was going up, and after a few more, more years, the absolute number of people in poverty was going up. Yeah, I, I read that in your book, but the absolute number of poverty is not the relevant the data. The relevant data would be the rate of poverty. Oh, and the, the, the rate, rate of poverty, uh, in fact, in the 19th century, I worked for President okay. Johnson, so okay. we have to establish yes. you know, so I mean, the, the, uh, the line we took was that during the 1960s, during the Kennedy-Johnson ad administration, poverty did, in fact, go down yes. sharply. Uh, and, and then the rate since then, not the absolute number because the country has grown mm -hmm. larger, the rate has sort of bounced around at about flat somewhere between 12 and 15 Yes, but, but don't forget, percent. don't forget, yeah. this was sold to the country, not on the grounds that if you transferred money from A to B, that B would have more money. That was not the argument. The argument was that dependency would be reduced, that you would, quote, invest in people, as Bill Clinton is now saying, now that people have forgotten what was said in the 60s. This will then, you give them job training and all those kinds of things, parenting skills, the whole bit. And this will then be an investment that will pay off in the future because there'll be fewer people dependent upon the government than there were before. And I go through a great number of people from John F. Kennedy to Lyndon Johnson, the New York Times, again, all the usual suspects. Said all these things. Lyndon Johnson was not a usual suspect, Tom. <laughs> well, I, he, 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 was, he was the primary suspect, all right. Uh, but the fact is, that was never tested. And when, you, when there were all these wonderful retrospectives held down in Texas mm -hmm. and other places about this, the first order of business is to evade the criterion that they themselves set up when they set this out. And so no matter what happens, if, the if, if, it's, if it's a failure by the original criterion, then we just find another criterion by which it will be a success. Well, l l let's just examine that for a minute. I, I have uh, a friend of mine from those old White House days was listening to, again, Gingrich shortly after the, we had this great Republican revolution in, in, uh, in 1994, a great meaning huge, not necessarily wonderful. We shall see about that. And uh, he, he kept hearing Newt Gingrich use the word opportunity, this conservative opportunity society, we have to provide opportunity. And, and I was talking to him, he said, you know, Gingrich uses that word opportunity almost as much as Johnson did. Which is what you're saying, that that was the rhetoric, uh, it was called the uh, equal, uh, uh, OEO was the Office of Economic Opportunity, yes. that's what it was. Now, so if, if liberals were talking about opportunity, and now conservatives are talking about opportunity, and I'm sure you're for opportunity. All God's children got opportunity. All God's children got opportunity. So, so what is your, your problem that, that liberals said we ought to create programs for opportunity? And in point of fact, I mean, uh, just to, uh, I won't say play devil's advocate, because I mean, a, a lot of the things that, that came out of the great society, uh, I mean, building all those junior colleges and community colleges. Oh, I would disagree entirely. I think that was a tragedy of the first That magnitude. was a tragedy. Yes. Why is that a tragedy? You have millions of people who have absolutely no desire for an education, using up billions of dollars of the taxpayers' money, and not only not getting an education themselves, making it more difficult to give an education to those people who came to college with an idea of getting one. Now you say they have no desire for an education. I mean, nobody is herding them into these community colleges and into the junior colleges oh. and into the state oh, universities. Oh. I mean, they have a desire, those, obviously. No, they do not, obviously, because lots of things go on in those places that are not education. I mean, where else can you find so many uh, uh, young people of the, of the uh, same age and opposite sex in one place 
uh, a, a nice, convenient place to be. But anyone who is taught in, these, in, in, in a lot of these places, this, this ferocious desire for education as such is not terribly visible. And I taught at places where we've gotten, you know, the upper 10, 15 percent of students, I mean, UCLA and whatnot. Uh, and uh, neither, neither I nor my colleagues found this great desire for education as such. They wanted to be in ivy-covered buildings for four years in order to get more money when they graduate and have a good time while they're there. So you think the, uh, the great American ideal, which has really been shared by both parties and both ideologies over recent decades, to allow more people to get into higher education, that that is a bankrupt idea? Oh, to allow is one thing, but to subsidize people at enormous cost with no real sign uh, that this is producing what, what, what we intend well, I mean, to produce. When you, say, when you say subsidize, I mean, you talk about a junior college, a community college. I guess that's subsidized. It, 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 it's, it's, it's below cost uh, sure. uh, 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 tuition, but it does allow uh, kids uh, who, who do not have the money to go to Amherst or wherever uh, to, to, to start a college people, education. I mean, it, it people did weird. that before the Great Society. I did it before the Great Society. My whole generation did it before the Great Society. You are saying that the, uh, the great humanitarian political impulses of the 1960s have been almost without exception bad. Well, there have been some, some good ones, but I'm saying that the assumption that uh, on the education front, I mean, I, I would defy you to find a large number of people who've actually taught these students who really think that they're out there thirsting for knowledge. Well, if, if you, if, if you think suppose they are thirsting for a better job, and we've set up a society where you have to be credentialed with a certain amount oh, of but college, but so can't, aren't they able to get a better job? No, be because this, of their this is the fallacy of composition. Uh, you know, if, if one person stands up in the stadium, he sees the game better. But if they all stand up, they don't all see the game better. Uh, as long as you know, if you have if you have a degree and the other guy doesn't, then you get ahead of him in the employment line. But we're not going to all get ahead of each other in the employment line by all getting degrees. So this whole idea that uh, I guess again both uh, liberals and conservatives are saying is that at this particular moment, 1995, uh, we have to get more people into the education system because that's the way to compete. And we look at the data and we see that uh, the people with more education are earning more money than ever before relative to the people with less education. People who That's all a fallacy of people, everybody standing people, up in the stadium. People, people who fly on the Concord, kids who've flown on the Concord undoubtedly will make more money than people who, kids who've only gone on buses. That does not mean if we put a lot of people on the Concord, we're going to raise the national income. Mm -hmm. but we would increase the revenues of the Concord. Yes, and which they desperately need, of course, right. but that's another story. All right, now, and, and just to, to review the bidding, you uh, date uh, the, uh, the, the full-blown nature of this, uh, this situation sort of in the 1960s, is that right? Yes, I mean, that's yeah. Everyone on the conservative side start. I mean, Genesis is mid-1960s, that's when the world started. I mean, I, and I, I'm not arguing with that well, necessarily. Well, that's not necessarily, I, 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 I would say the fall in the garden. Right, okay, all right. Now, uh, since the 1960s, uh, the United States of America has uh, won the Cold War, remained a, while a lot of people, including a lot of mostly conservatives, were saying, oh, America's lost its nerve, and we can, we, because we're I don't, being, think, I don't think I was mostly conservatives. Well, th th I, I recall a, a, an issue of the public interest mm. uh, in, uh, in the mid-1970s saying, has America lost its nerve? Mm. A whole bunch of conservatives saying, oh my God, it's terrible. We're well, this, this is Jimmy Carter's uh, era. Well, well, maybe that's right. Uh, but, but so it, since this terrible event uh, 30 years ago, when the, the, when the 60s dropped upon us, we've, we've won the Cold War, we've, we've continued to grow uh, in affluence, in professional skills, uh, we, we have absorbed about uh, 20 million immigrants. Uh, we are the wealthiest, freest country uh, in the history of the world. You would agree with all of that, I, roughly. Well, I, I, I disagree entirely with your base period. Well, none it's, of this, it's your base no, period. No, 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 your, no, 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 you, no, no, no. You, you things, established in 1960. No, no, I no, no. I'm, I'm saying I all, you, all, no, all no, those no. things that you talk about began long before the 1960s. They faltered a, to, a, to a great extent under Jimmy Carter. They were, re, they were, they were resumed with a renewed vigor in the 1980s under an entirely different kind of, kind, of, kind of vision. But I'm talking about the social decline of the country because the social decline is all the more striking because here is a country that is prosperous. You can't blame the 
the crime rate on the fact that there's more poverty, there's less poverty, uh, there's more affluence. It's not due to foreigners because, as you say, we've won the Cold War. Uh, all the normal things that you might blame all this on aren't there. It's not because of diseases, because science has conquered more diseases. It's all because of self-inflicted wounds. And I'm saying these are the people who inflicted those wounds, and this is why we shouldn't listen to them anymore. What are the nature of those wounds? Crime. No, no, no. I, the disintegration of the family. The disintegration of the educational system. And those, and, and it, it's not going to matter. We, we'll be like the man who gained the whole world and lost his soul. I, I, is there a common root to all of those, uh, all of those problems, o other than you heard them from the anointed class? I mean, is there something? Is it big, yes, is yes, it, is yes. It big what, what, is it big government? Is that what? No, no, no. It, it's the notion that ordinary people cannot be trusted to make the decisions that they've been making, but these must be preempted either by judges in the case of crime. Uh, by the schools taking over the indoctrination of other people's children behind their back and, in, and, and against their uh, protests. Uh, or what, what's, what, what was the other one? Uh, the, the family. Uh, putting, uh, taking money from the taxpayers and subsidizing behavior, as well as encouraging it and legitimizing behavior that has turned out to be enormously self-destructive, uh, undermining the family in a thousand different ways. Uh, Tom, you write in your new book, The Vision of the Anointed, available at all bookstores, um, about the Teflon prophets. Yes. Who, what, what is... Uh, well, I, I think my, my favorite is Paul Ehrlich, who, because he's been so consistently wrong on so many things. Uh, one, predicting mass starvation, I think it was the 70s or the 80s, but uh, predicting that we're running out of, um, uh, uh, running low on, on, on resources. And uh, Julian Simon made this famous bet with him. He would bet, offer to bet anybody $1,000 that they could name a set of resources and uh, name a period of time. And at the end of that period of time, uh, those resources would not be more expensive as they would be if they were really running low, uh, but would be uh, either stationary or, or, or falling in real terms. And uh, uh, Ehrlich rushed in with his list of 10 resources, and he decided we'd come back at the end of 10 years. At the end of 10 years, not only was the bundle of 10 resources uh, cheaper in real terms than it was before. Every single resource he named was cheaper. Let me raise a, a final point here. Y you make this uh, vigorous attack in the vision of the anointed that we should no longer listen to these people. That's sort of the big, they've been wrong, it's, they don't prove their points, uh, it's hurt us. Who should we listen to? We should listen first and foremost to our own experience. You seem to act as if there must be alternative saviors. We should stop looking for saviors. I mean, the society has not existed for thousands of years because it had a succession of saviors. It's existed because it has institutions and processes through which people can realize their own goals. No, I, I understand that, but, but, y but you are attacking people who, uh, who would like to lead us and tell us how the world works. No, no, they, no, no, they don't want to tell us how the world works. They, want to, they want to take over the decision for us. They don't tell the ch parents how they ought to teach sex education to their children. They put this material in the schools behind the backs of the parents with instructions not to let the parents see it. Okay, but, but that's we, the problem. But, but we live in, a, in an open and democratic society. Now, uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. John Q. Public are listening to this pro program, I hope, and they're saying, Boy, that guy really makes a lot of sense. In term, but basically, uh, it's been a negative proposition. Don't listen to these people. Don't do this. Don't do that. No, no. What, wh uh, who, don't who let those people run your life. Okay, but how, how do you how do you practically? I think it's a non-problem, Ben. No, Look, but how, how do you? It's a non-problem. Those people are adults, just like you and me. Okay, who, they who, have been running their lives for thousands of years. They, they don't need me to tell them what to do. Minute, but this is a it's not a question. I want to take over from uh, uh, people on the left. No, but this I want them to continue to make make their decisions as they see fit. Right. But, but, but this is a democracy. They have to, they have to vote. Even in a democracy, okay. they can live their who, lives as they see fit. Who should they vote for? Oh, good heavens. They've been voting for whoever they wanted to without my well, help for so, 200 but years. Of, but some of these people are, are voting for the people who are listening to these anointed people. I mean, you, 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 I give, give, well, my, audience, and I, and I, give and my audience some advice. Tell them what to do. Last year in 1994, without any help from me whatsoever, they changed who they voted for. And, and so it's a non-problem. 
you say without any help to you, but you and your confreres in the conservative movement, I, I think, have had an influence but, but, on but, 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 but it wasn't because of, the, of this book, obviously. 